I am the one, true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Amen. Amen. Be yeah. seated. God is good. <clears throat> All the time. Okay. Oh, in chapter 14, the, we see that the, the Lord was giving the disciples uh, comfort as he was preparing himself for the crucifixion. And he continues to give them the discourse with an illustration of the vine in today's chapter 15. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches, and the Father is vine dressers. The point of his sermon is to remain in him, in Jesus, so that we can bear fruit abundantly. Hence my sermon title remain in Jesus and bear fruit. Right? But why did Jesus use the vine as an illustration and said he is the true vine? Is it, 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 it is because the vine is a symbol of Israel and God's people. The disciple who had inherited the Judaic culture knew where, according to the words of God, Israel was the vine to the Lord, as said in Psalm 80, and verses 8 and 9. You transplanted a vine from Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it and it took root and filled the land. And there is Israel to the Lord God as a vine tree. So a vine <laughs> is a symbol of a nation Israel. So there at the front of the temple is set the golden vine as a prominent decoration to communicate the idea that Israel is God's vine. The vine was also a recognized symbol of the Messiah. So Jesus used the vine illustration to evoke the sense of the national identity as the vine of God and the national expectation of the Messiah. The Messiah that Jesus wanted to hit home with his disciples is that he is the true vine. In other words, he is the true Israel by whom the physical nation Israel will be eclipsed. And Jesus is the Messiah. That is what Jesus wanted to ring in the ears of his disciples. Now having said that, Jesus is the true vine. He went on to say that the Father, as the vine dresser, prunes the branch that bears fruit so that it can produce more, more abundantly. But the vine dresser God will take away 
or take away the branch that bears no fruit. And the branch that fails to remain in the vine will be like the, the, um, the branch that's thrown away and withered. So Jesus wanted his people to bear fruit. We must bear fruit. But when it comes to the true meaning of salvation, we should understand that one of its indispensable and very important meanings is to bear fruit. It is because salvation has two big meanings. One is deliverance and the other is the growth into the likeness of God. Okay, let me say again. Salvation has two big meanings. One is our deliverance and the other is our growth into the likeness of God. We are saved, delivered from the curse of sin and condemnation of the law to death. So, salvation means a deliverance from curse to blessings, from death to life, from condemnation to justification, and from enmity to sonship. We are delivered from a wrong direction to the right one. But the Deliverance means more than a change of position from one state to another. It means that we are set in the right track again to carry out the original purpose of our being, which has been banned by the fall of Adam. Hence, the other meaning of salvation that is growth into the likeness of God. As a matter of fact, one of the church fathers, Iranius, understood that man created in the image of God is to grow into the likeness of God. The growth into the likeness of God has been translated by the Apostle Peter into our participation in the divine nature. So he said in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and the following, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him, that is Jesus, who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Our growth into the likeness of God, that is, our participation in the divine nature is the meaning of salvation, which has been originally intended for the creation of man. We are created by God in his own image so that we can grow into his likeness in that we reflect God's truth, God's goodness, God's beauty and God's holiness in our keeping in step with the Holy Spirit. So, I would like to say that the fruit that in today's passage Jesus says we should bear is referring to our growth into the likeness of God. But, our Lord Jesus says specifically, love is the fruit that the Father vine dressers wants the divine branches to bear. So let's hear again 
the rules was saying love is the fruit that lasts and we should bear. He said, verses 9 and the following, this, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servant because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. That is the fruit that we have to bear. And that fruit sums up the meaning of our participation in the divine nature. That is our growth into the likeness of God. Amen? Love is what sums up our growth into the likeness of God, as I said. So it can be said that when we are completely transformed into the likeness of God, we will see ourselves nothing but love. It is because God is love. God wants you, you to be trans into, trans transformed into the quintessence of love. Because God is love. You want to be like me. Because God is love. You want to be like the quintessence of love. You got to practice that. You got to bear that fruit of love in loving one another. True love is true good works done in accord with Jesus' love for us. It is the never unto act done not so much for the sake of the name of good as for the sake of other person in the image of God. So the only way for us to bear the fruit of love is to remain in Jesus' love. By remaining in Jesus' love, we can love others. Remaining in Jesus' love means to have our souls soaked in his everlasting and never-failing love. It means to fill our souls with his love and let it overflow our souls onto others. We cannot love on our own. Only when Jesus' love overflows our souls can we love others. Only those who are loved of God and who really taste and see His love for them can love others because the love of God, love of Jesus, First, to fill our soul, fill their soul, and it overflows and flows all on to others. Loving others is not act of our, you know, the act that we do on our own. It is grace of God that is overflowing naturally when we fill ourselves to the brim and overflowing with His love. Amen. So you have to remain His love. You have to drink His love every day basis, right? That is why Jesus asked us to remain in him and in his love. We should have our souls constantly assured of his love by remaining in his love, lest we give our enemies a devil a chance to deceive us. Jesus' illustration of the vine tree tells us that there are two types of branches. One is the branch that bears fruit. The vine dresses prunes it so that it can be more fruitful. 
the other is the branch that fails to bear fruit. So the gardeners cut it off, the vine trees, and uh, threw it away it with their sand. It is uh, thrown into fire. Now, the vine tree illustration gives us some insightful message. The message should be understood in relation to unpleasant sufferings and hardship that we may be faced with while we are on this earthly journey. If we are reflecting the gardener's act of both pruning on the good vine branch and cutting off the fruitless branch, in the light of God's grace and mercy that want all sinners to be saved, then we can see that the same suffering and hardship allowed by God towards us would result in two totally different effects. I'm telling you, those who remain in Jesus' love shall see the trials and suffering as the act of God's pruning instead of intended to train and strengthen their inner beings. And those who fail to remain in his love might well see it as God's punishment. And as a result, they depart from God. In such different ways, the same trials, hardship, and suffering can be seen either as the love of God that makes all things work for the good of us or as the hatred of God towards us. Now the emphatic point of Jesus' teaching in this illustration is not on the warning that God will cut you off from him if you don't bear fruit, but on his desire to have us remain in his love so that when trials, hardship, and suffering come up against us, we can see it behind them that God's hand is at work preparing something even better for us. That is why Jesus used the word remain seven times in today's passage. So it is the vine dresser who either prunes or cut off at the face value of the illustration. But the important implication is, as mentioned, it is us who make the same pain and hurt accompanied by trials and sufferings, either God's pruning or his cutting off. So we must remain in Jesus' love for us, come what may. That's what the faith is all about. The character of faith is tenacity and the resiliency in sticking to God's Jesus' love. Only those who remain in his love can grow into the likeness of God in that they bear the fruit of love abundantly. For God, for others, and for themselves. For them, Suffering and hardship appears as a means of grace to lift them up to the image bearers of love of God. So regarding this, the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and the, through 5, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that Suffering produces perseverance, a perseverance character, and character hope. And the hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So, do you have a suffering now? Are you faced with a hardship? and going through a trial? 
But I want to encourage you to remain relentlessly in Jesus' relentless love. Then all these unpleasant and daunting moments shall turn out to be the time for the fine dressers who is our God to prune you so that you grow into his likeness. But those who are not remaining in Jesus will depart from him. In other words, it's not God who cuts off them. It is they himself, they themselves who cut themselves from God because they see trials and hardship and suffering as God's punishment, God's hatred. But it's not God's hatred when trial comes. It is God's paradoxical hands of grace that treat you and help you to grow into the likeness of God himself. Amen? Amen. That's not the point of the message of Jesus. Remain in me. If you drink my cup of love, you will be the cup which will overflow in my love so that, or, 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 that, that, that my love will overflow and touch others and that you will be like the image of God. Amen? And that you will grow into the likeness of God who is love. We are called to be such a wonderful people. Let's encourage one another especially so when we are faced with any trial or hardship. Amen? Let's remain in Jesus' love and grow into the likeness of God, bearing fruit of love. Amen? Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for your message. Help us remain in Jesus' love so that we be like the vine branch that is more fruitful. Father, we thank you. We bless you all things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.